All right, everyone, we start off today talking about the hypocrisy and stupidity of the limousine liberals, but even more, I think, of interest is the stupidity of the entire public right now with regards to war profiteering and all the propaganda we're seeing. People are eating up the bullshit and the obvious, even most transparent propaganda, and it's like you know, most of you were alive, you know, during the 9-11 period, the invasion of Iraq. Certainly, the vast, vast majority of you were alive during the annexation of Crimea and some of the other conflicts that we've seen. So this isn't your first rodeo. You retrospectively look back and say, well, I guess I, we were sold bullshit the last time around. But this time, magically, uh, I, I see a super majority of people saying, this time it's real. Everything that I'm hearing from whatever my trusted news source is is absolutely real. Doesn't matter whether it's from Russia or it's Ukrainian state TV or it's CNN. Doesn't matter what leanings it has. Uh, as long as it's a moneyed interest, you're being lied to. You're being misled and yet people, again, the cognitive dissonance kicks in and they just don't have the capability of saying, maybe this war is like the other wars that I've witnessed and like other wars from the past. Now I look at those with a critical eye the, those ones, you know, in retrospect, we probably shouldn't have gotten involved. This time it'll be a great idea. I see a lot of people clamoring for, for like, the West to up the ante with a no-fly zone and stuff over Ukraine. I'm like, that, that's a terrible idea. It's a horrendous idea. Also, you're dealing with a nuclear uh, a state invading uh, one of its neighbors. It's not Libya. This is not a nation with a developed but ultimately far inferior military capability. Um, <laughs> it's not a, a technically third world country. Uh, it's one with resources and not just a, a monocultured energy industry. Uh, Russia does actually have more than that. There have been more than, than uh, potatoes and cabbages and shit. Uh, I, I look at, for example, George Takei the other day saying, well, all of these higher prices in the West, yeah, it hurts, but we've got to make that sacrifice for democracy. It's your patriotic duty to pay more at the pump. I'm thinking, no, it's not. It'd be your patriotic duty to tell the Biden administration to open up new drilling and deregulate the energy industry as a reaction to what's happening, because no, people shouldn't have to suffer more. But there are people that seriously believe this. Now, he's worth supposedly over $10 million. He's a limousine liberal. So it's not him that's going to have to sacrifice and suffer. He'll still be able to get his kale and, well, you know, at his age, you probably can't chew that. So his, his smoothie with kale in it <clears throat> and his arugula and his, his, uh, his uh, every, anything that he wants he can get. You, meanwhile, you're looking at bacon and saying it's $9 a pound. Yeah, yeah, gas just hit $5 at the pump. It's no longer economically feasible for me to even commute to work. Eh, the economy's going fine. It's a sacrifice. I have to do this in order for people halfway around the world in a country that I didn't even know existed probably a couple of years ago. Certainly can't usually find on a map. I have to do something about this. It's patriotism. Now, I'll tell you what. If these people really wanted to stop the fighting that's going on, really put the screws to Russia... They would take a look at what Russia, at Ru Russia's uh, banks just began doing with their credit system. Visa and MasterCard said we're no longer operating in Russia, which is a, a major thing. Imagine, you know, you can't conduct any form of commerce. And they've already had bank runs. The Russian economy right now is effectively in cardiac arrest mode. What does, what does uh, some of the Russian banks do? They say, well... We'll just use the uh, Chinese payment system. We'll, we'll issue new cards to people. Well, problem solved. China has the purse strings. They're the ones that control the money in this endeavor anyway, not Russia. The Chinese economy is by far bigger and more robust, more diversified, and definitely more keyed into regional banking. You have to sanction China in order to do anything. When I see these uh, fucking companies, they're like, well... We condemn the actions of Russia. We're, we're going to end the limited amount of business we already do in Russia. You do realize, again, the Russian economy is more, is more sparse than the Chinese one. The number of Westerners invested in Russia, outside of the energy industry, of course, is less than the number of people invested in China, by far. By, probably by fucking two orders of magnitude. None of these steps mean anything. They're not saving Ukrainian lives, and I see people cheering them on and then berating other people as pro-Russia and, and, and uh, propagandistic commies if they oppose the measures, but it's not doing anything. Here's the thing that I would say, 
and I've been consistent now for years. First, that I'm anti-war, and that includes Russia invading its neighbors. Just to get that out of the way, I'm, I do condemn the fact that they've invaded Ukraine. I'm also in favor, if you're going to take action when something like that occurs, is a terrorist movement. There's an invasion going on. A nation has fallen into famine. Uh, anarchists have risen up. Nazis or something. Look at the situation and think what can actually pragmatically be done to help the situation. In some cases, that means doing but fuck nothing because there's nothing to be done. When you look at the Ukraine situation, we could take up a hard line, but that would require a civic movement of Americans to stop buying Chinese products and demand divestment of U.S. industries in China and to demand the government do something to rein China in. It's still manipulating its currency. It's still fiddling around with the books. It's still constantly trying to undermine U.S. businesses and force them to censor people and, and, and control their words and actions in the West. Look at what they do with the NBA. But there are people that don't understand that that massive money sponge of China is what bankrolls what Russia is doing right now. Their banking system now has just, by the way, again, effectively been partially pegged to Beijing. Well, then how are we supposed to impact their banking system and, and do anything? And by the way, why? What good does it do to make the Russian people more miserable? That's just going to lead to nationalistic fervor. It's, it's, it's sort of like when the Russians uh, shut off the water, or bomb the power supplies and stuff, shut down the TVs and so forth in Ukraine. They're not winning any allies there. They're taking people that are mild, that are on the fence, and they're just hoping the problem will go away, and they're turning them into Ukrainian nationalists. When we hardline Russia, we risk doing what was done to the Germans, which led directly to the rise of the Nazi party. We made them miserable. We punished them collectively. This is with the, the treaties post-World War I, etc. Uh, demilitarized them and, and so forth. Ruined their economy. All, that's, that's what led to the situation. That never would have happened. The Nazis and the communists wouldn't have risen up and effectively fed on one another. I've analyzed how that happened. Uh, one side, you know, gets bigger. The other side tells people that are adjacent to it to worry and to join them. Otherwise, the other guys will win. And they both keep growing because the center is too weak to stop them from doing so. And even when it tries, it usually fucking fails and just alienates people from the center even more. That never would have happened had the economy there been reasonably good. It wouldn't have happened. And there was no reason to collectively punish them after World War I anyway. It's not like they were the only ones gassing the trenches. So then we'd have to deal with the, uh, the failed art student. Who also, uh, yeah, k kicking people out of art school because they prefer landscapes over portraits. Also probably a bad idea. Uh, when I look at these rich liberals, these are people with seven, eight-figure incomes or seven or eight figures in the bank accounts. They can do whatever they want fiscally. They're capable of managing. If we enter a Great Depression, it's not like they'll be poor. They won't be as rich. And some of them, if they're just invested in things and they don't have any you know, tangible assets, they might be fucked. But George Takei, I'm sure, he has more than one bank account. Uh, he lives a reasonable lifestyle. He can count on making six or seven figures in a year. He doesn't have to worry if the bacon's $9 a pound. He doesn't even go shopping himself, probably. Probably has, probably has a steward, a, a fucking butler, go do it for him. But they're willing to sacrifice you in order to uh, supposedly help the situation in Ukraine. No, what it is is a bunch of corporations making money. Raytheon loves this. <laughs> All of the companies that are involved with arms profit directly. Keep in mind, they're major donors. They're adjacent to other industries that are also profiting directly. The biggest one, though, is just corporate grifting. Hey, we participated. Taco Bell or something will put up the Ukrainian flag on Twitter. I helped. I participated in the situation. You're not doing jack shit. There are so many people who think that it's meaningful, and they've been taken in. They've been conned by the same thing as like the black BLM id poll. I, my corporation put up the BLM flag, and people say, you know, that doesn't do anything. You're grifting. Other people will get really mad when you call them out as the grifters that they are, and they'll attack you. Well, you're just... But you're just sensitive about it. You're a right-wing snowflake who doesn't like black people. Now you're pointing out the corporation didn't do anything. It took five seconds for one of their staffers to add an emoji to Twitter. 
That's it. They're hoping that you'll go scarf down their greasy ass meals or buy their shit ass cars or 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 buy whatever else was probably partially pre-manufactured in China from Chinese components by the way. Buy their cheap plastic crap. Buy their stupid sports memorabilia, all the materialistic things in life. And if you don't, you're not woke. Now it's if you don't, you love Russia. And again, History keeps repeating itself and repeating itself. The limousine liberals, the idpole bullshit grifting corporations, like after 9-11, every, uh, every uh, ad had a flag in it. Remember that? Also, at the same time, it's again just like the way that the French were regarded by the U.S. mainly uh, after shock and awe. You'll remember the French said, maybe it's not a good idea to invade Iraq. Well, you hate the West, you hate patriotism, and you're un-American. It's like, well, you're French, so who gives a shit? And people were dumping out expensive bottles of wine in the streets. It's still, to this day, I'm assuming that they've survived lockdownerism. There's a restaurant called Seward's in Rutland, Vermont. I think that Freedom Fries is still what they're called on their menu. That changed right after that period of time. It had been French fries before, I know, because we used to eat there on weekends with my grandpa. By the way, not bad food, but I mean, it's like you're trying to participate, and uh, it's just grifting. If they hadn't changed it, they were afraid of losing customers. That's basically it. Either they can profit more or they're afraid that if they don't take an action or say a certain thing or back a certain ideology that they'll lose business. Politicians are doing the same fucking shit. You'll notice that the handful of sane voices in politics right now tend to be people that are out of office. They're people who were in office. They're people who may want to be in office and they've got some left or, or right wing niche to, uh, to uh, rant from. Uh, they're not establishment, <laughs> not neoliberals. Ron Paul might make sense. Hey, maybe we should stop it with the warmongering. There are people, I think, who genuinely believe that the situation can be salvaged. And then most, most of those people, by the way, are too fucking stupid to realize even why this happened. A lot of them are still Biden fans. Oh, yeah, Bi Biden is going to take Putin out behind the woodshed and challenge him to a push-up contest. Are you nuts? Again, there was a reason why Putin didn't invade the prior four years. He invades Crimea at the end of Obama's administration. Doesn't do jack shit when Trump is in there. The second that Joey is in there as asterisk administration steward, all of a sudden, all of the rest of Ukraine gets invaded. Yeah, I'm sure that this is because Putin made Trump his pawn. That's why. He didn't decide to invade when a dude who wouldn't do anything about it supposedly was in office. Okay. Anyway, it's just a wall of fucking propaganda. From stem to stern, everything you're seeing right now is at least misleading. From Ukraine, from Russia, everything adjacent to it, and a lot of it's just corporate bullshit and grifting assholes like George Takei. People like that that want you to pay more. You can absorb it, don't worry. Yeah, I know you're already hemorrhaging money because gas is four fifty five dollars a fucking gallon. And then when you do get to the store, you can buy half as much because of Bidenflation. By the way, he's a big Biden buddy. Uh, I, I know that you're suffering, but we suffer collectively. We're all in this together. He says from his McMansion. <laughs> in his case, probably not even Mick, just... A mansion. How many bedrooms is in your home, George? How many homes do you have? It's probably more than one. How many cars do you have? Do you have a sports car or a limo? Which one did you get? I know you're not exactly in the highest echelon of income. You're not Donald Trump or, or someone like that. Uh, you're not Klaus Schwab, but you're rich enough so that you can have one or the other. Which do you prefer? The nice, long, sleek limo or the really fast, peppy little two-seater red car with the uh, detachable top? Which one do you prefer, George, while you're suffering with your $50 clam sandwich or your truffles and shit like that? <laughs> which, which, uh, which of your 17 bedrooms, or whatever you have, do you cry yourself to sleep in at night while suffering, thinking about the, the little people out there that actually have to choose between their food and their meds right now? Bunch of fucking asshole morons is what these people are. And they would love to send your kids off to die. It's funny that Takei learned nothing from his childhood in a fucking internment camp that was also built by a socialistic uh, uh, left-wing Democrat named FDR. He learned nothing because he's fucking stupid. That's about all. Peace out.